Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News, which is always myself, Bobbin. Got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, a.k.a. the Crypto Beast. Uh, it's Friday around here. Just wanted to uh, thank you guys for coming out, viewing our, uh, our content. Um, as you guys know, we kind of like to get together, <clears throat> pick a couple of news articles um, out from some crypto headlines that we see fitting, and then we just kind of go back and forth about it and see what you guys think. Um, but before we get started today, I'll let Scott tell you a little bit about himself, and then we'll go right into it. Yeah, for sure. Scott with Big One, as well as work for Asia Blockchain Community as a social media person. So excited to be here. Excited to see you guys. And yeah, uh, today's the end of the week, but uh, hopefully we can end it with a couple of good little uh, quirks of information and yeah, go from there. Yeah, I mean, the uh, market sentiment has been kind of uh, up and down the last week and, and we talk about it every day and uh, kind of watching i got you know it's a lot of people watching um a, a lot of bitcoin targets right now and, and as well as some of the major altcoins um but definitely going to be interested in see how things go uh going into a red friday uh, i always see like a weekend pump and i always have a, a thing i always say never trust the weekend pump right um so but without further ado we'll jump right into the news today uh, my first headline um, that I'm going to read is coming from Bitcoin.com. Uh, the headline reads, DeFi banking startup exotic market raises $5 million in latest funding round. So for people who don't know, um, the DeFi platform called Exotic Markets is uh, Solana-based. Uh, and it just recently celebrated raising $5 million in a private token sale. The venture, which offers a wider range of structured products uh, than most existing platform, um, DeFi platforms, welcomed an investment from several BC firms and family offices, including uh, Alameda Research, Ledger Prime, Anim Amico uh, Brands, and FMFW.io as well as MGNR. Um, so it looks like they got some, some good funding from um, you know, some private venture, uh, venture capitalists. And um, it goes on to say, as the leading cryptocurrency derivatives market maker, Ledger Prime is excited to partner with Exotic and support its use of options to generate yield, which we view as sustainable, um, which we view as more sustainable than projects relying on heavy token emission. We look forward to actively providing liquidity on exotic and helping exotic achieve its goal of democratizing, uh, yeah, democratizing yield for all investors. Uh, and that came straight from uh, the the uh, chief investment officer over at Ledger Prime. So looks like they got some good partnerships worked up um, to to have a, a good launch, and it's I guess that would be great news for Solana as well. Oh. Um, my first piece of news is kind of interesting. I've never really got into it before. I know you've talked about XRP before, but the XRP army wants to expose the SEC via Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, and attempt to lay bare the dealings of the SEC, the XRP army is rallying support to get attorney John Deaton on the Joe Rogan podcast. Attorney Deaton is a prominent figure in opposing the SEC lawsuit against Ripple. He's primarily known for his role in enacting Amicus Korea, Latin for friend of the court for 65,000 XRP holders, thus allowing investors an opportunity to voice their opinion in court. Uh, the U.S. Secretary Regulator brought legal action against Ripple in December 2020 over their allegations, of course. Uh, but what they're trying to say here is they were really unfair by just picking on XRP that there is a lot of different people they could have went after, like Bitcoin and Ether. Uh, so it'd be interesting if they actually got this onto the Joe Rogan show. I think it would be kind of interesting to hear what would happen with that. I think it would become highly popular in the XRP community for sure, but it'd be interesting to see what would happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I think they, they've been doing, uh, you know, not really like a lot of uh, podcasts and things, but uh, I think, you know, as the case gets closer to being settled, I think you're going to start seeing, you know, them, uh, you know, go out and, and take more chances with, you know, uh, getting on different shows and talking about uh, everything. I could even potentially see some kind of, uh, you know, movie reel or something coming out from XRP after this case is settled. I think everybody wants to get their hands on a little bit of information um, when it comes to, you um, you know, uh, XRP about what they went through with that case, because it did seem like they might have been targeted. Um, but I don't know if that was, uh, you know, self-targeted or, or targeted by the government officials for sure. 
Um, but to go into my next uh, article today, it's coming from Bitcoin.com as well. And it's um the headline reads, Boba Network introduces we all going to make it uh, options for developers and builders. So Boba Network is a layer two expansion layer of Ethereum has announced uh, its launch, what we call the WAGMI options, which stands for uh, we're all going to make it. Uh, you probably see that all the time on like Twitter headlines, but that's what those uh, those those uh, acronym. That's what that's the acronym for. Uh, the incentive program will be distributed amongst different projects on the chain and will be based on various indicators such as active wallets and project uh, specific TVL. Uh, Bubble Network is optimist, uh, optimism-based layer two solution on Ethereum has announced that the launch of an incentives program uh, using we all gonna make it options. These options, according to the Bubble team, would be a different solution from other chains have tried. Um, and they said traditional liquidity mining programs are zero sum. Users come to collect high rewards and are incentivized to keep those re rewards. The WAGMI farming turns this model on its head by being positive sum, users are incentivized to evangelize and encourage behaviors that grow bubble. Um, these, these options will also have different versions and they are to be adopted by several projects um, to include them in the, in the next coming weeks. So it looks like they're gonna do something a little bit different than the liquidity mining uh, that a lot of projects started doing. Um, and I'm looking forward to see like, you know, some of the, the new the new spins on, um, on some of the the uh, the, pro the protocols and different layers and what they're going to be doing uh, since it's kind of the development time of the year. That's amazing. <laughs> That's always great when some new project is launching something, right? Like, I don't know, especially when it's in the market like the way it is right now. It's kind of intriguing to see people come out with this. That means innovation and changes, right? So, I For sure. I always love that. So, um, my next one is going to be on the wrapper Nas uh, right. to let fans own part of his music through NFTs. Award winning rapper Nas will release non fungible tokens that will let fans own a stake in two of his songs, Ultra Black and Rare. Users who buy and hold the NFTs dubbed limited digital assets will get the specified percentage of streaming royalty ownership depending on the tokens that they hold. Ultra Black came, comes from Nas's 2021 Grammy Award winning album King Disease, while Rare is from the follow-up 2022 Grammy nominated King Disease 2. The former song will have a limited supply of 760 tokens, while the latter will have 1,110 tokens. Both will be released on January 11th, 2022. And buyers will be able to acquire the tokens on a first come first serve basis. And this is through the project Royal. Um, so yeah, they said, we're honored to announce hip hop legend, innovator and entrepreneur Nas will be the first artist to drop his music on Royal on January 11th, which is awesome. I love this music. NFTs are getting really big right now. Uh, I took part in a little project yesterday and all the NFTs, there's a thousand of them sold out in one minute so oh wow oh it happens but yeah it's interesting yeah Nas Nas is uh definitely gonna be one of those guys I mean I don't know how much you know about Nas but he's uh one of the uh, CEOs over at uh, Coinbase um so this is gonna be really big to hear him talk about getting his music on the NFTs and stuff like that doesn't surprise me one bit at all uh, kind of kind of uh, goes to show you know the innovation that's going to be or the the adoption that's going to be taking place and how artists try to take control of uh, all their rights and and uh, for all their music and I think deservingly so right so uh, goodness gracious um yeah so I think that's going to be really really interesting um to jump into my last article uh we're going to go over to coin telegraph the headline reads uk air traffic tech firm uses hadera hashgraph to track drones so the multi-drone trial was held in port montrose scotland and cranefield university in bedfordshire in, uh, in april and uh, october respectively of 2021 hadera's uh public head, uh ledger consensus was recently used to gather store in order millions of data points in a drone data trial sponsored by the UK government. We have made an unmanned long distance drone travel possible using safety critical aviation infrastructure. Each uh, flight creates millions of data points, which no other ledger has been 
fast enough to log in log and do correctly um, in that order. So it looks like they're going to be using the, the ledger from a Hedera Hashgraph, which is also a, you know, a ticker HBAR um, to, to track some of their drones and, 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 and you know, make these, uh, these long distance, uh, these uh, long aviation uh, tr tr trials and um, flying these drones. And they're going to be using this to, you know, keep things in line. So it kind of goes to show they're going to, um, you know, with, with companies using air traffic uh you know using uh the the blockchain for air traffic i think that's a, a, a proper way that we could possibly solve traffic one day as far as uh you know automotive traffic on on streets and roads uh letting you know the blockchain and letting the cars drive autonomously so uh, i think that's going to be something that gets pushed uh these kind of ledgers that get maintain these uh these accuracy and maintain this accuracy and speed is is definitely something to look into as we go into 2022 Definitely, for sure. And that's amazing that they can do that. Like the innovation that's coming in blockchain is, is absolutely crazy. Um, my next one, I just pulled one thing out of here, but there's actually a couple little tidbits in here. So, but I'll just talk about it. Uh, Bitcoin at 42,000 levels, indication that Airbnb may take crypto payments. So that was a big thing that I was kind of wanting to, to concentrate mm -hmm. on, but there's a couple other interesting articles. Uh, Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky hinted in a reply to a tweet that he might start accepting crypto payments in the future. So if Airbnb gets on crypto payments, that's huge. Also, also golfer Matt Wallace hinted some collaboration between Elon Musk satellite internet company Starlink, Starlink sorry, and the Dogecoin Foundation in a tweet. However, the details are not very clear yet. So, which is... Kind of interesting to have Starlink and Dogecoin working together. There's got to be something, maybe a payment system or something like that using Doge. Yeah, I'm thinking like a faster way to send like send uh faster way to send money peer to peer uh in countries that uh don't have a um uh I guess like a greatest internet service um so they could you know provide different payment systems for peer-to-peer -peer transactions i think that would be really big um but before we get out of here today guys I'd like to jump over to trading view kind of get a look at see what's going on um i i, I always been talking about this the last week uh, with a little bit of excitement just because uh you know it's like one of the you know anytime the chart plays out the way you're kind of seeing it play out whether it's you know bullish or bearish it just kind of gives you a little bit excitement and i know for myself i've been a little bit excited just kind of watching things play out right now we're looking at the total market cap and it's at 1.98 which is down three and a half percent from yesterday bitcoin dominance um is at 40 percent even um looks to be dropping down a little bit and ethereum dominance is at 19.29 so uh it's going to be very interesting to see as we start hitting some of these last local levels uh you know with the market cap especially total market cap um and it being at you know 1.9 1.8 again if it doesn't hold here uh you know we could potentially see the, the total market cap scott go back into the uh, billions of dollars uh it's going to be very wild to see you know especially you know we were doing uh you know when we started doing this it was i think around 3.4 trillion uh was what the market cap was when we started doing the news so to see it potentially go back into the 900 billion dollar range uh there's going to be major opportunities for wells to really scoop up some stuff um, and I hope everybody, you know, who's, who watches the show and, or comes by or, or even, you know, skeptical about when to buy back into crypto is whenever you want. I think at these levels, uh, this is a great accumulation zone, whether it stays here or goes down lower. I think you just do it based off your risk management. Um, but as always, guys, happy Friday. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming by. I know it's, uh, we have a busy weekend ahead of us. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend as well. Um, but until Monday, uh, we won't be here anymore. But uh, you can check us out maybe uh, on Twitter space a little bit later today at 12 o'clock, 5 o'clock p.m. UTC. Um, and um, before we get out of here, Scott, you got anything? Uh, no, I'm just excited for the weekend. It should be a good relax and uh, we'll hit the refresh clock on Monday and see what the market looks like on Monday. I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, man, I think, you know, maybe January might be a little boring, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of love in February. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> but until, until Monday, guys, have an amazing weekend and peace. Peace.